button. Deb, I believe you are on mute. On mute. Thank you. Well, I just want to say welcome to all of my incredible colleagues all over the Commonwealth of Virginia, and I am thrilled to welcome you. And I thank you for your leadership. I thank you for your dedication and the important work that you truly have undertaken. Um, meaningful recognition uh, is the fuel that fosters teamwork and reinforces a culture of caring. And it's because of you that meaningful recognition is able to prevail throughout the Commonwealth. What we know is that in 2005, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses outlined six standards for the creation of a healthy work environment. Just as a review, their authentic leadership, skilled communication, effective decision-making, appropriate staffing, true collaboration, and of course, meaningful recognition. And since then, researchers have reaffirmed the importance of meaningful recognition and unpacked for us why it's so important. And for us as nurses, it's really, it's tied to purpose. We chose to be nurses because we want to make a difference in those that we serve and receiving feedback from patients, families, students, colleagues um, has really made, made a difference and is so incredibly rewarding and reaffirms that we've made the right decisions for a career choice. Positive and meaningful recognition also buffers the effect of burnout. It enhances what the researchers call compassion satisfaction, and it is associated with a greater well of, um, of team be of a be better <laughs> associated with team well-being. Uh, we know that we've certainly needed it, right? Over the last two years, the extended stress um, has taken its toll on the profession and all of us in healthcare. Um, the American Nurses Foundation said that an overwhelming number of nurses are feeling stressed, frustrated, exhausted, and overwhelmed and anxious. The American Organization of Nurse Leadership has found very similar findings in nursing leaders, particularly the frontline nurse managers. They have found that one in three nurse managers has reported that they are in an emotionally unstable place. So what um, meaningful recognition does, it really um, is, is what really is the fuel and helps us with that reserve for the work that is underway. And although this is somewhat alarming, there really is good news. Organizations that continue to honor the good work of their teams, communicate regularly with clinicians, even when they did not know all the answers and led with authentic leadership styles are faring much better um, during these turbulent times. And what, just, what is just as significant as the positive impact on the clinical teams is the profound healing power on the action on the writer of the day of the Daisy nomination. Researchers have found that the act of nominating a clinician or a nurse for an award has nourished the soul of the nominator. In fact, they call that therapeutic reflection. The process has allowed families the opportunity to articulate exactly what attributes they find within the profession of nursing and within an organization that is so meaningful to them. And the ability to nominate a nurse enhances the family's perception of that healthcare organization. So overall, we all win. Organizations that foster expressions of gratitude provide an opportunity really for, for incredible healing. Meaningful recognition is vital to a healthy work environment. It's critical for teamwork and supports resilience and compassion. We Today, we recognize you for all that you do, and we want to hear from you um, how we can continue to improve, how we continue to grow. What you've learned really makes a vibrant uh, culture of meaningful recognition and how we can together really um, give fuel to the redesign uh, and stamina that we know is gonna be taking place in the redesign of healthcare. So thank you all for being with us. I anticipate that it will be an incredible uh, time together.
And without further ado, I am now going to introduce you to the people who really created DAISY and made this happen, and that's Mark and Bonnie Barnes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deb, and thank you so much for uh, expressing such great gratitude from all of us at DAISY on, on behalf of the foundation. I'm Mark and I are here to, to say a, a hearty welcome and an especially another thank you to all of you and to talk for a moment about what's been going on at the DAISY Foundation. And really it's thanks to the work you all are doing. As Deb said that um, the DAISY Award has truly become uh, a very meaningful evidence-based practice. And it's evidence-based because all of you have created um, techniques in how to bring recognition to life in your organizations. And you've shared them with us and enabled us to share them with now almost 5,500 healthcare facilities and nursing schools, not only throughout all 50 states, but in 32 other countries as well. The, uh, Mark and I talk about this often that it, we could never have imagined when we started the DAISY Award 23 years ago, just about, that, that DAISY would, would be having the scope of impact and, and reach that it is having now. And again, what we have learned from nurses and from people like all of you who have taken this program to your hearts, well, that in our opinion is the reason why DAISY is DAISY. So on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you. You all are now uh, not only members of this extraordinary community, but also there are 189,000 nurses who have been honored with the DAISY Award so far. But the number that really touches us the most is the fact that more than two and a half million times a patient or a family member or a coworker has stopped and taken the time to share their gratitude by writing a nomination for a nurse for the DAISY Award. So thanks to the hard work all of you have been doing in, in collecting nominations and in uh, giving patients and families and colleagues a way to express their gratitude through DAISY, we've seen this incredible outpouring of gratitude to nurses. And it's just, it is a thrill for us to, to be part of this. So with that, I say, thank you, Mark. Is there anything you'd like to add? Well, yeah, I, I uh, would just like I would just like to add that um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit older than everyone else, and I frankly think I'm a little bit wiser. So I just want you all to know that I agree with everything that Bonnie says, and that's how I will leave the meeting. So thank you. I won't get into any trouble now. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Melissa. Thank you. My name is Melissa Barnes. I'm the VP of Operations here at the Daisy <clears throat> Foundation. I am very honored to be Bonnie and Mark's daughter-in-law and also able to welcome you to our very first ever Daisy Roundtable. Today, we are going to have some fabulous partner presentations. These are hospitals that have continually received so many nominations and they're excited to share with you how are they making meaningful recognition so successful we will then have breakout room discussions where your daisy coordinators are going to be able to talk amongst yourselves you're going to be able to meet each other maybe exchange email addresses ask questions um, and get to know each other we will all come back to the main room we'll have a summary and then we will have thank yous for the conclusion. For housekeeping within the chat, please feel free to use that chat throughout the presentations. You can talk with each other, ask questions, etc. If you do have a question, please include your email address as we are not able to record your email addresses in case we run out of time and need to email you the response in the future. Please stay muted during presentations and please be unmuted during the breakout room discussions. And as I said earlier, we will be recording. So you can certainly choose to have your camera on at any time, but please go ahead and um, leave that camera off. That is instructions for the breakout room, which we will enjoy in the future. For our very first presentation, I am so thrilled. Ashley Nagara 
came to the Daisy Foundation and said, I have this idea. What if all the Daisy coordinators in the state of Virginia, Washington, DC could get together? We could do some best practices. We could meet each other. We can exchange ideas. And I said, oh my gosh, this is a fantastic opportunity. And this is why we are able to have our presentations today. I'm thrilled that our first presenter is going to be Ashley, the University of Virginia Health. She is the Nursing Recognition and Retention Specialist in the Nursing Governance Office. Ashley, take it away. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Huh? Yay. OK. Um, first off, it is an honor to be here. Um, it takes a lot and means a lot for this group of people to spend their day recognizing our frontline team members who believe that the work that they do every day is just what they do every day. Um, so it's really important that um, being yourself is enough and we honor our nurses in that way. So thank you for being here. Melissa, do you, are you gonna share my slides or should I? Let me go ahead and share my screen. You got it okay, Ashley? Well, of course, you know, I'd be the first one with the technical difficulties here. <laughs> Bye. There you go. Are you seeing them? So, um, not to spend too much of my time on myself, but um, this presentation is short, so I would love to connect on LinkedIn afterwards. You can find me, A.V. Noguera, or email me anytime. Uh, UVA Health is in the Charlottesville, Virginia area, so if you um, are nearby, I would love to grab a coffee with you. Um, I am not a nurse, but I have the pleasure of working with nurses every day. And let's jump right in. So at Days at UVA Health, we launched Nurses Week um, 2015. Um, I have been here since our inception. Um, if you are not familiar, uh, we're an academic medical center, meaning that we are a teaching hospital um, on the same grounds as the university. Um, a majority of our nominations are from patients and families, which is so, so, so special. Um, DAISY is not our only recognition program. Um, we do have a very robust Nursing Excellence um, Award program that we uh, facilitate during Nurses Week, but DAISY is the only means for our patients and families to recognize a team member. So super special. We do a fully electronic um, nomination collection system. So we have worked with our web development team and our marketing team to create a UVADAISY.com alias. And when you go to that website, you will see our nomination form. Um, you'll also see uh, information about the DAISY Award program and a list of our recipients. Uh, we do have a paper form for patients who are not so tech savvy. Um, our nurse managers or um, unit assistants can print out that form. It can be mailed in, uh, emailed, faxed. Actually, I have a one on my fax uh, from earlier today that's on my desk. Um, I also have patients call my cell or my um, desk number consistently, and I love to talk to them. I love to hear their stories, help them type up their nominations. Uh, we do use a uh, committee structure. So we have a committee of 35 frontline team members. Uh, they're across all practice settings and all different um, areas of their nursing practice. Uh, we have novice nurses, To um, One of the nurses on the committee has 42 years of nursing experience. So. We use that committee to read the nominations and vote on our recipients. We honor two recipients a month, but we do celebrate all of our nominees. We create a beautiful packet for them, and uh, we have the unit uh, leadership celebrate them um, in their practice area. Uh, we actually have some areas that do such a good job at celebrating their nominees that the nominees don't even know that they haven't actually won. Um, our medical ICU is the perfect example of that. 
so really thankful uh, for the partnership with our um, hospital leadership to ensure that that happens. Um, I'm going to come back to this slide if we have time. So, um, how to present and continually celebrate our honorees. Um, we do surprise unit celebrations. So we um, start with uh, finding out who our recipient is, we get their schedule, and we, uh, on the back end, work with uh, the leadership team to find out when we can get our um, chief nurse and our associate chief nurse to present the award. Um, so thankful. Um, they are uh, so excited to be a part of our Daisy celebrations. It cannot happen without them. Uh, they are at every single one. Um, our associate chief nurse um, and our chief nurse, they actually read the nomination out loud to the group. And um, our Daisy chair or vice chair actually presents the goodie bags that we give our honorees that includes the Healer's Touch sculpture. So it's a uh, kind of dyad uh, relationship for our presentations. We also coordinate with marketing, catering, to make sure our photographer's there, that our cinnamon rolls arrive. Uh, and we do have our cinnamon rolls come 30 minutes after the celebration, because if they get there before, everyone's like, oh no, who's getting the daisy? So we don't want to ruin the surprise. Um, and then uh, the photos that we get from the celebrations, like this beautiful one of our pediatric um, acute care team, they won the Daisy Team Award. Uh, we work with our marketing and social media colleagues to make sure that we can publish those internally and externally. Okay, so um, like I had mentioned before, our UVDaisy.com, this is kind of a little sneak peek at what the recipient uh, area looks like. It has the uh, recipient's name and then a hyperlink to the Daisy Foundation spotlight. Uh, so they can share that with um, friends and family. Um, the left side of the page is our internal newsletter. Uh, this is the main page if you're a team member at UVA. When you log onto your computer, this is what it looks like. So we have the spotlight. Uh, we uh, do two daisy spotlights a month, and then there's an email blast to all medical center employees. So uh, I'm proud to say that our daisy articles are always in the top 10 most read articles of the year. Um, it's really nice to see um, everyone supporting recognition. You can also leave comments on the article, so it's really nice to see team members saying like, oh, Ashley's awesome. Um, I used to work with her. She's so great. Um, so that's another way to like recognize folks after they receive their Daisy nomination. And this is just a little snippet of um, our Instagram page and our LinkedIn. Uh, we try to do these two to four times a month, uh, as well as uh, uh, some signage in our hospital lobby and main clinic areas. And uh, we have shared governance boards also um, across our inpatient units where you can patients can walk by and see, wow, this is such a great <laughs> board. Can you tell me what it means? And then the nurses. Um, I can explain to them about our DAISY Award program. Here's a couple more uh, across our areas. Um, I'm at time, but uh, some other additional things that are on our slide, um, just some things that we do to keep our, the spirit of our DAISY recipients um, uh, in the forefront after they've already received their uh, nomination. We continue to celebrate them throughout the year at many different events. And I know I'm at time, but if you want more information or you want to connect after this, um, you'll get a copy of this presentation or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. That was wonderful. And now for our next speaker, I am excited to introduce to you Jennifer Drake from Inova Alexandria Hospital. She is the clinical educator for onboarding Caritas Coach, and I'm excited to hear her presentation. Jennifer? Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here too. So let me flip over here. So uh, I am Jennifer Drake. I am the clinical educator for onboarding, but 
I'm also the DAISY coordinator for Inova Alexandria Hospital. Um, Inova Alexandria Hospital is part of the Inova Health System. We are five hospitals and over 185 ambulatory sites. So we're all over Northern Virginia. And for years at Alexandria, we were a hospital that we had one uh, daisy a quarter, so four daisies a year. And we decided to move up to 12 daisies a year, which was a really big jump for our small community hospital. We decided to go with a quarterly awards model, so that allowed the leaders to prioritize the time to recognize their nurses, and they knew when we were going to be celebrating our nurses. We wanted to include our new Shared Governance Professional Development Subcommittee or Subcouncil uh, in the DAISY selection, but we also needed to promote DAISY across our hospital to get more nominations. So we started talking about it everywhere in all our newsletters and meetings, ever more and more than we've ever done before. And our subcouncil put it as part of their charter, so it was a priority for our, our uh, shared governance. And then we held our first quarterly awards. We had so much fun. And our leaders uh, were inspired to get their nurses up on stage for recognition. But we wanted to do a little more. And I heard a presentation from Dr. Vanessa Wright and on a research study she did with Jean Watson on Caritas and Daisy. And we thought, well, maybe this might work for us and we could look at our stories. Our theoretical foundation here at ANOVA is Jean Watson's human caring theory. So Caritas and Daisy stories seem to make sense to us to include. So when we began reading our stories with the intent to hear the Caritas through the patient's words, uh, we also were looking at our extraordinary nurses and what matters most to our patients. So we added some structure by creating a DAISY scoring guide that included the DAISY attributes as well as care task processes for the scoring sheet to get ourselves organized you know, so that we could start gathering this. And to share the caritas in our ceremony, we added the caritas processes at the end of each story so everyone would hear the caritas in our patient's words. Since we began our transformation, our nominations have increased tremendously. Instead of receiving three or four nominations each quarter, we now get 20 to 40 nominations each quarter. We have daisy nurses everywhere. So next, our next steps will include rolling out DAISY Leader and DAISY Team Awards at our next celebration. And soon it'll be hard not to find a DAISY Award at our hospital. It'll be in every corner. So through DAISY and Caritas, we are able to recognize our nurses for their extraordinary care and share how caring theory is alive in the practice of all our nurses here at Inova Alexandria and to listen to what our patients tell us matters most to them. That was fantastic, Sherry. Uh, thank you very, very much, Jennifer. Appreciate that. And now for our next speaker, I am proud to announce that Sherry Meese, the Executive Assistant to CNO, ACNO, and CMO, also DAISY coordinator for Riverside Regional Medical Center will be presenting next. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm happy to be here. Um, as Melissa knows, very nervous because I'm always a behind the scenes girl and never have to do meetings or anything. So I am totally out of my shell for this go around for this um, this meeting here for all of us coordinators. So um, again, I'm Sherry here at Newport News um, here, and here's some of our highlights. We've had the program since 2013. I've been at Riverside almost seven years now. So in the seven years, I've taken over the DAISY program and got it to where it is today. Um, my shared governance team is with me every month as we read all the nominations and then pick who our DAISY honoree for the month is going to be. We are um, Pathway to Excellence designated and we're currently into our journey to our magnet programs. 
And here's kind of how we collect DAISY nominations. I had a QR code made up that we put each one of those um, QR codes in the patient rooms on the, on the whiteboard. And if they do the QR code, then it comes directly to my RRMC uh, DAISY email address. And um, the brochure holders down at the bottom, I had six of those made that are throughout the whole hospital that people drop the nominations in. And believe it or not, Ashley, most of mine come handwritten. To where we have some phone, phone calls, but most of mine are in those drop boxes down there that I walk around twice a month and collect all the nominations and then process them through there. Next screen. I like to track, I'm a numbers girl, so I like to track things. So every month I track how many DAISY nominations we have um, gotten for that month. And then I also break it down more for each unit. We have like, I forget how many units I have, 21 units that I track DAISY nominations from. So um, August is ending today and I think I'm at 87. I just got four right before I came in for this meeting. Um, I love to celebrate the DAISY thing because it's always a surprise to our person that is going to get the honoree for the month. I go behind the scenes, get with the nurse manager, our administrative team here, so we can go up to the unit and present them with their awards they have no clue they're getting. Of course, there's the Cinnabons that they all love to get. I always make sure that they get a really nice bouquet of the DAISY flowers. And something new that I got to do for them was a, um, our green jacket that we do for all of the um, DAISY honorees that we do once a month here. And then our newest thing was I was able to get our DAISY honoree their own parking spot that they get for a month. It's theirs, no one can park in it, and they parking here is crazy, so to be able to have that parking spot, they're all about it. Um, I did the daisy wall with my help of my CNO, Sadie. We worked on that tremendously to get that done. So every month I put the daisy honorees photo in there and they will stay for that whole year. So like till the next August, that person gets the recognition in one of the main hallways of our hospital here. Um, the nominations, if they, if they don't get picked by my shared governance team, they at least get a nomination letter signed by Sadie, our CNO, with the original um, DAISY nomination letter and the DAISY nomination pen. Um, let's see, my last thing is, we just started the DAISY Leader Award. So in May, as part of our Nurses Week, we got to go with um, Kaylee, our NICU nurse manager, was our first recipient of that award. We do the um, team award, which my ED team got this past July, we recognized for them. And then probably about a half an hour before I came to this meeting, I sent out an email to all of our RNs and our LPNs to get ready to do my next um, nurse leader award, because we do that one uh, four times a quarter and our um, team award we do every year. So um, I really do this all by myself here other than my shared governance, but I'm the one behind the scenes making sure it all takes place. I don't have like a team to do that other than the shared governance that I ask them to meet every month to pick out our winner. So that's about it here from regional here at Newport News. I love being the DAISY coordinator here. It, it's, it's my baby that I took from hardly nothing to where I get the hundred and some DAISY nominations a month now here. So I'm, it's very proud and I've, um, I really enjoy being the DAISY coordinator here at our hospital. And that's, that's all I have. Thank you so much, Sherry. That is wonderful. Loved hearing your wonderful, great ideas, especially around celebration and well said. Thank you. Now it is with great pleasure that I will introduce our next speaker, Tanji Pruitt, who is the program lead for the Department of Nursing Science, Professional Practice and Quality from Children's National Hospital in Washington, DC. Tanji? All right, just one moment. We have had some people having difficulty with their Zoom. Tanji, are you with us? Yes. All right, she might be having some technical difficulties. Oh, no, wait, she, there she is. 
We're good to go. Good afternoon. It is my privilege and my pleasure to present to you all today from Children's National in Washington, D.C. Again, I am Tangi Pruitt. I am the DAISY coordinator here. Today, I will review three topics, nomination collection, nomination management, and honoree celebration. Before I begin, I would like to share with you the importance of having leadership buy-in. Our CNO, our nurse managers, and our nurse directors play a very critical part in the success of our, in the success of our program. Children's National includes our main hospital, several regional outpatient clinics spanning DC, Maryland, and Virginia, as well as our children's school services component. The basis of our program begins with awareness and accessibility. Internally, we must ensure that we reach our inpatient units, ambulatory, children's school services, and housewide using our intranet. Externally, we have partnered with our PR and marketing department to place information on our internet and also using our QR codes. Some of the techniques that we have used internally include monthly themed emails, nominee, nominee and honoree kudos through our Twitter and also our email, publications sent through our Division of Nursing and the various departments within nursing, inpatient materials, including our admission folders, DAISY boards on the units. Our Get Well Network is also one of our places that we ensure that we are making our patients aware. Our ambulatory units have places in which they receive nominations. And our children's school services, they have a monthly newsletter in which they also make announcements. And again, externally through our internet and our QR codes. Many studies have shown that we remember verbally and also visually. We, re we retain 20% of what we hear and 80% of what we see. So we reiterate verbally through roundings and in meetings. And some of the techniques we use visually include our patient materials through emails, publications, the unit boards for DAISY, our QR codes, our intranet and our internet. We do have an intranet page that is dedicated to DAISY. We ensure that the forms are available through hard copy and electronically. Knowing your population is very important. For us, we ensure that those who are technologically advanced or technologically savvy or who would like to are able to nominate electronically. There are QR code and also to send us an email. We also have the hard copy for those who prefer that method. Our nomination forms are in both English and Spanish. They also come from our patients, even though they're pediatric, believe it or not, as well as our community and other staff members. We streamline the points for all of our nominations through a particular DAISY email account and also through our electronic forms in our digital warehouse. Our QR code feeds to the electronic form digital warehouse. We do this through an amazing team. And when I say amazing, I mean amazing. We have a, a co-coordinator who works very closely with me on our daily operations and ensuring communication is sent out housewide to all of our persons. We have everyone on our committee as part of our review committee. We have a voting lead, a virtual lead, and a recognition lead. Our recognition lead is extremely important as that person ensures that nomination, nominations that are received for nominees, not necessarily honorees, each nominee receives a packet, which includes a letter from our CNO, a nominee pin, as well as a copy of their nomination. We have seen how this has really increased the morale on our units and it has increased the opportunity for us to actually receive more nominations. We store all of this in a DAISY honoree and nominee database, which is held electronically and it is used for various reasons. We track and trend our data. We also have placed our DAISY programs part of our strategic plan. It's part of our shared nursing leadership plan, as well as our division plan, which actually rolls up into our hospital plan. So ultimately our hospital is supporting our DAISY program. 
We also use this information for other submissions and nominations that may be external for copy requests and to confirm with the DAISY Foundation if the person is an honoree or a nominee. We've celebrated during pre-COVID through coordination with our units. COVID, we actually have gone through virtual presentations. And post-COVID, we're not sure if we're really post-COVID, so we're still using a virtual medium, but we also use a hybrid medium. So we may have one or two persons attend the celebration. Our virtual presentations includes a private YouTube channel for our video. A standard email sent to the Daisy Nurse Honorees leader to coordinate that celebration, and it includes the link to the video. After the video, after the celebration, the Daisy Nurse Honoree will receive a congratulatory email with a link that he or she can share with their family and friends. That email also asks for permission to post their information on the Daisy website. We honor our honorees through various means. Every year during our Nurses Week, we ensure we have at least one day designated to Daisy. We have had Daisy teas, and we've also celebrated Daisy's 20th anniversary. And if you note, in all of our events, we ensure that the nomination forms are available. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see a small rectangular item. That was actually a business card that was created by one of our members at the time, and it includes the QR code. In case the person doesn't have the opportunity to complete a form, they can take the QR code and send a, send a nomination at a later date. That is the overview of our program. This is our contact information. And I'd just like to say thank you. Wonderful. I'm loving all of these great ideas, great best practices that you are sharing. Thank you so much. One of the things I love the most about the DAISY Foundation is the fact that DAISY really crosses all lines. It doesn't matter what company, what organization you work for, we all share great ideas. And with that, I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Wendy Davis, Director of Clinical Practice and Education for the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters in Virginia. Hi, everyone. I'm hoping you can see and hear me. I yes. am blown away by what I've heard in the first 37 minutes that we've spent together today. This has been a phenomenal idea, Ashley. So thank you very much. Um, let's see. Uh, just a couple of points about where I have spent the entire 33 years of my nursing career as a grown up. I am in Norfolk, Virginia, which is adjacent to Virginia Beach. We are very proud and constantly tout the fact that we are the only freestanding children's hospital in the state of Virginia because we are not, that doesn't include, doesn't include DC. Um, we have 206 licensed beds in our main hospital, on our main campus and three urgent care centers, two outpatient surgical centers, over 20 pediatric practices. And the thing that we're most excited about right now is the impending opening of our children's pavilion, which is on the right bottom corner of the slide. Children's pavilion is, is across the campus that we share with Eastern Virginia Medical School and Centera Norfolk General Hospital. And it is a 14 story building. Much of the outpatient areas are already open, but what's getting ready to open in staged in a staged timeline in the fall is three mental health inpatient units. And we could not be more excited about this area of service because it's desperately needed in our community as it is in all of yours as well, I'm sure. And I know that's not necessarily DAISY specific, but I do want folks in the region to know about Children's Pavilion and to know about the impending mental health services that are um, gonna be available to our children and your children. From a DAISY perspective, similar to so much of what you've already heard, we gather our nominations from obviously the inpatient areas, but we also have um, nomination portals across most of our ambulatory services throughout Hampton Roads as well. We do still receive paper forms as do most of you. And we've also 
created the QR code, which I've seen in most of the presentations already. Um, some departments choose to laminate that and place it on a bulletin board. I've also created um, the clings that um, are in many patient rooms, depending on the choice of that particular department. So there's, there's ample access to the QR code. I have a wonderful administrative assistant in my clinical practice and education department who go, goes around um, the departments every week or so and gathers them from the plexiglass boxes and then also gathers the online codes and then she enters them into an electronic nomination logs, very similar to what Tanji just described that we keep in a shared drive. We have a master log and we've also created a secondary log for the managers and directors if they care to access it, which some of them have, have asked for. We do also include a separate, very small log of ineligible nominees. And those would be those um, individuals who are on um, corrective action. I do wanna query the group afterwards about what you all are doing um, in regard to travelers, because I know everyone is grappling with the legions of travelers that um, are working with us right now. Every month, my wonderful admin assistant, Kaylin, will collate the um, nominations in a table and she will send them via email to the members of our recruitment and retention committee prior to that meeting so that people can um, review them because some of them are quite long and it it's nice to take your time and, and review them at your leisure so that you can be prepared when you get to the meeting. When we do come together, it's a, a robust group of unit-based leaders. So that would be managers, directors, and educators, as well as our CNO, who is incredibly invested in DAISY. We each select our top three choices, not necessarily ranked in any particular order, but our three, quote, favorites. And then we vote. The honorees are selected, obviously, through the voting process. Occasionally, we'll, we'll have a tiebreaker. And if we feel like we can, we'll award more than one a month. Our goal is, a, is one a month. But again, we will. sometimes we don't have any. That's rare. And occasionally, we have more than one. I just um, coincidentally presented two yesterday. I very rarely do that. The first at 7 AM and the second one at 16.30. It was a very long day. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to talk about in the round table is, well, something we've come across is the frequent flyer phenomenon. When you have individuals, and you all know these people who are nominated again and again and again for DAISY. And up to now, we've really only uh, limited it to one win per person, but we have been involved with DAISY for well over 10 years. So that list of frequent flyers is a little bit longer as time goes by. So we're considering and probably going to um, make a decision to have, present to nurses again after a designated period of time. And what will that time be? Um, obviously you wouldn't want someone necessarily to win March, April, May, and June, but would it be every so many years, et cetera? So something to, to, talk, to talk about. For those who aren't chosen, we've created this card stock card that um, the CNO signs for every nominee. And we also provide them their nomination because people are incredibly curious as we all know and understand about what their nomination compri is comprised of, what that individual said about them. In terms of recognition, we have our intranet homepage and that the announcements are posted there with hyperlinks. The first hyperlink is the individual's name that takes you to the DAISY website and their award um, as it's listed or posted on the website. And then the second hyperlink is more information about your program in general. On the right is a example of the slideshow that we have in our hospital lobby area. So all of the DAISY nominees for the previous year have a picture um, as you can see there with Gary's picture, and then all of the past nominees are just listed by name. And those just kind of scroll by every few seconds, if you will. I did not have a terribly lengthy presentation. I do wanna put a plug in for you all. We've created a similar in-house grown program for our assistive personnel. And I 
should have added a slide about that. It's called Sunflower. So something similar to the DAISY theme. Our nursing care partners or nursing aides are, as you all know, and certainly would agree, integral to the team. And sometimes assistive personnel can be uh, feel underappreciated. So in order to address some of that and to honor their commitment and their hard work, we have created our Sunflower program. And, and it's not, you know, through a national collaborative. So it's not as quote easy as Daisy because you all create so much of, do so much of the work for us, but it's it's turned out really, really well. And it's been very, um, very valuable. So that's all I had. Thank you very much, Wendy. You raised some interesting questions that I hope Daisy Corners will um, be take the time to think about and answer amongst yourselves and during the breakout session. Well said. And now for our final speaker, I am happy to produce to produce to introduce Jill DeLauder, who is the director of patient services at Centera RMH Medical Center. Take it away, Jill. All right, thank you all. I'm very honored to be here today. Get my slides pulled up. I think it pulled up the wrong screen. So are you all seeing full screen just so I can make sure? We are. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for having me today. My name is Jill DeLauder and I'm a Director of Patient Care Services at Centera RMH Medical Center, which is a 238-bed not-for-profit hospital part of a 12 hospital system. And we have had our DAISY program since 2017. I can't believe the time just flies by. First and foremost for us, it's really important that everyone knows that we have a DAISY program to recognize our nurses. So we have numerous avenues to bring awareness to staff, our patients, the visitors. Um, for our staff, for our new hire specifically, in our general nursing orientation courses, we actually introduce our DAISY program and review the process for submitting nominations. For our patients, we have our DAISY brochures and our patient admission binders. So when the nurses do the admission with the patient, they actually pull the brochure out and review it with the patient. And of course, if there's family present, they're reviewing it with family members as well. We also have large display banners, as you can see on the screen to the far right, we have large banners that are located in our main lobby and on all of our nursing departments. We have display posters on units where we have recently recognized a DAISY honoree. Um, and again, that's really more, uh, it is a recognition tool, but it's also an awareness tool because it prompts our visitors to ask about the program, what is DAISY? And then in addition to all of the flyers, the brochures, the banners and posters, we also have plasma screens in our waiting areas um, and that includes our ambulatory service lines. So we do prompt information about DAISY on those plasma screens as well. And then as you'll notice in the center image on the screen, we have a DAISY cabinet that is in our main lobby and it has all of the information you could possibly want to know about DAISY and it is um, it offers easy access as well for our visitors or patients, whomever is passing by, to scan the QR code and submit a nomination. I am sure that our collection process is very similar to the majority of you on the call. It seems, it seems so. Uh, we have nomination bins, um, like you can see on the screen. And they are on each of our units and in some of our larger departments like the emergency department or women's health area, some of them have three bins located in their departments. Again, so it's easy access for patients or visitors to drop a nomination in the box depending on where they're located in the department. We also collect nominations electronically. And again, the nominator can simply scan the QR code on a flyer and submit. Our primary submission route really truly is still on paper, but we do get a fair number of electronic submissions. And then for us quarterly, we have a volunteer who goes around and collects all of the nomination forms from all of our various departments and then restocks the paper, the paper forms for us. Once the nominations, and that's both paper and electronic are collected, we do blind them. 
And then during the blinding process, our secretary sorts the various nominations. Sometimes we receive nominations for individuals, for departments, for non-nursing personnel, and sometimes it's one nomination with multiple people listed. So our secretary will sort those and um, we keep the individual nominations and use a different pathway of recognition for those. Um, those the, the blinded nominations then go to our Nursing Shared Governance Nursing Excellence Council and they vote for their top three favorites, again, in no chronological order. Um, and our Nursing Excellence Council is essentially our magnet champion group. And we have one representative from all the various departments on that council. On average, we receive somewhere between 65 and 85 individual nominations um, each quarter. And then usually another 15 to 35 nominations are uh, part of those other groupings that I mentioned, uh, other, depart other departments or a full department. And again, we, we select three winners per quarter. The next step for us, once we have received the votes back from Nursing Excellence, is to have our secretary work with the unit manager to schedule individual recognition sessions. We try to schedule them during shift huddles or staff meetings where the most staff are present. We invite all members of the interprofessional team by sending a calendar invite out, and that also includes senior leadership. On the day of the recognition, we read the DAISY um, program story, so they the entire staff members get to hear about Patrick's story and where Daisy came from and why do we do this. And then our chief nursing officer reads the specific nomination out loud to the entire group. Um, once the honoree is identified, we provide the Daisy recognition bag, which of course has a fresh Daisy from our floral shop, uh, the lapel pin, the certificate, the sculpture, and then the original nomination. We also provide the freshly baked cinnamon buns for all of the staff working on that shift. And then of course we take lots and lots of pictures. Other types of celebrations, of course, are our Passport USA celebrations. Those are nurses that we onboard from a contract company. Um, we also do an annual Daisy Nurse Leader Award as well as a Daisy Team Award. And our groups just love that. Again, those are additional items. And then of course, when people meet eligibility requirements, we do on occasion have a lifetime Daisy Award. For us, we like to use multiple avenues to recognize our honorees. So we post their nominations and their photo to our facility specific social media platform, our organization Facebook page and our monthly nurses notes article, as well as our facility electronic article, which is called Now You Know, and that goes out to all members of the team. In addition, we post our annual winners on the Wall of Honor, which you can see in the picture, and that's located in our main lobby. It does have a list of all the winners from 2020 on. Um, the list for 2021 is currently being created. And then, of course, to the right, you can see the most recent quarterly winners. Ongoing recognition, of course, is to include our honorees in our nursing annual report. We also include listings for those members who have received numerous nominations and have gotten extra awards, such as the Green Award, and the Platinum Award. And again, that gets posted into our electronic submission. I think I went slightly over, but thank you very much for having me today. It's been awesome to hear from my colleagues with similar programs. Um, I think we share some things and hopefully we can learn from each other. Well said, thank you so much for sharing. I hope everyone had a few ideas that they have gleaned from the presentations. Jill, very well spoken. Each one of you has done a phenomenal job and I am hopeful that everyone has enjoyed these presentations. And now it's time for the interactive part of our presentation today, where each of you will be uh, sent to one of four breakout rooms. This is a great opportunity to turn your camera off, be able to introduce yourself to your fe fellow DAISY coordinators, and be able to chat about any issues or questions that you might have. When it is time to return, please click on the blue leave breakout room. Please don't leave the meeting. Please come back.
If for some reason you accidentally leave the meeting, just push that same link that you originally did for the Zoom and you'll come right back in. But in the meantime, try to remember to push that blue lead breakout meeting. I'm going to assign you now and you will have approximately 15 minutes to discuss with amongst yourselves about your DAISY Award programs. I'm going to stop recording.